Hello everyone. In this session, let me stand it, start with the uh, fourth unit. So, so far we have completed three units. Please uh, practice the question papers as much as possible. And uh, in question, in unit four, whatever you will get most of the theorems, uh, which are very important. And moreover, it is asked in uh, almost all the examination. And um, before starting with this unit, so introduction part. It is a little wood three principle. So we anyhow we have already proved all these theorems. So it is just a, re a little re recapitulation. Further, this statement you have to keep it in your mind in order to prove the further theorems. So first statement: every measurable set is nearly countable union of intervals. So we already proved that. Suppose if E is measurable, we can express it as countable union of all countable union of all uh, intervals are open intervals. right so anyhow we have already proved this now every measurable function is nearly continuous function suppose if f is continuous then we can say f is measurable and moreover every convergent sequence uh, all these three statements we have already proved but uh, we say these three are little wood three principle and uh, it is true for uh, almost all the sequences i mean uh, uh, function or a sequence as per the statement now third one every convergent sequence of measurable function is nearly uniformly convergent in the sense if fn is a sequence which is converging to certain value then if the sequence is converging to the certain function this function will be uh, measurable and moreover it is uniformly convergent fine so you need to remember these three statement now let us uh, go to the first theorem in unit 4 so it is called as bounded convergence theorem so it is very important it is asked in the year 2016 as well as 2018 fine and uh, you need to remember statement as well so here is a statement let fn be a sequence of bounded measurable function that is if fn represent a sequence of bounded measurable function which is defined on a set e of finite measure and if fn is converging to f almost everywhere so it represent almost everywhere on e then we have to prove that integral over e f is equal to limit n tending to infinity integral over e fn fine so this is what the statement is now coming to the proof so given that fn is bounded right a sequence fn is bounded so you already know the meaning of bounded right from your ug classes bounded in the sense the the value of that particular sequence should be in between certain value so let me take that value as m that is fn of x will be in between m that should be less than or equal to certain value should not exceed uh, fixed value so that is the meaning of uh, boundedness that is there exists m greater than 0 such that it satisfies this condition and for all x be belongs to ey because if a sequence is defined on a finite set of measure fine and moreover what is the given data fn is converging to f almost everywhere right so this implies uh, just now i have told you that for every convergent sequence If the sequence f n is converging to f, then f is measurable. Second principle of Littlewood. Our Littlewood second principle says that if a sequence f n is converging to f, then we can say that f is measurable. Right. So as per the theorem, if a sequence f n is bounded and measurable, then Lebesgue integral exists. That is integral over e f exists. right so when do we say a lebesgue integral of a certain function f exists only when uh, i mean for a sequence particular sequence a lebesgue integral exists only when f is measurable so how i arrive this uh, concept that is uh, how i proved the concept of f is measurable uh, by using a concept of a bound boundedness second little bit second principle says that suppose if a sequence is bounded and moreover uh, it is converging to a certain function then we can say f is measurable so if f is measurable as per the theorem that we have already proved we can say that lebesgue integral exists right suppose since in the uh, definition itself uh, they have clearly given that a sequence is bounded now let me write the formal definition of a sequence uh, since what is the given that uh, that is convergent i am just using the definition of boundedness and convergence since fn is converging to f almost everywhere and e it is given then there exists epsilon greater than 0 and let me take a delta as a small quantity which is in terms of epsilon that is epsilon by 4m m is bounded 
right boundedness value of a sequence or bounded value of a sequence then there exist a set a with measure of a is less than delta i have proved all this theorem so you need to remember that so measure of a is less than delta and for any integer n greater than 0 we can write magnitude of fn of x minus f of x will be less than epsilon divided by 2 into measure of e it is not m into e it is measure of e fine so what i have done is i have applied the concept of or a definition of convergence so usual definition is whenever a sequence fn is converging to f then we can write that for any epsilon greater than 0 and delta greater than 0 or delta for a small quantity we can write fn of minus f is less than some uh, minimum value say epsilon this is the standard definition but here instead of epsilon i have chosen few more uh, what we say uh, a value which is lesser than epsilon we are dividing the epsilon further by two times measure of epsilon fine so i have uh, considered the definition of uh, convergence uh, this will be holds good for any element x belongs to e minus a and for any and for all n greater than or equal to an integer n fine now let me consider uh, integral elementary integral of fn minus integral of f and I am going to take magnitude for this. Now we know that we can write this as we have already put the properties of Lebesgue integral. So this is one of the property of Lebesgue integral. So we can write this as fn minus f, right? I have joined these two integral and I have made it as one integral, Lebesgue integral. I have already done this in a property of Lebesgue integral. You please go through that. Now, since we are um, splitting the magnitude, so as I already told you, when you are going to split the magnitudes, I mean, when you are going to take the magnitude in, uh, inside of the integral, equals will become less than or equal to. So, it will become less than or equal to integral over E, Fn minus F. Fine. Now, let me uh, write this as integral over A, magnitude of Fn minus F, plus integral over E minus A, Fn minus F. I have written this as, see here, I have splitted this integral by using the properties of integration. This is the standard property of integration you have studied in class 12, right? What is the property of integral? Say, suppose if, you're, if, if you have an integral over any set, we can split this as like a plus e minus a. Again, when you add these two, a plus e minus a, what you are going to get? You, again, you will get back e only. So, I have splitted this as a and e minus a. You can write like this. Fine. Now, what I have assumed is difference of Fn minus F. Let me write this as. Uh, first, let me write it for the second one. So, second term, you just look at the second term. Why? Because uh, uh, second term is an uh, integral taken over all the elements which belongs to E minus A. So, what is the value of uh, magnitude of Fn minus F? Fn of X is minus F of X is same as Fn minus F. So, I can write this as, I'll just explain the first term. First, you let me explain second term so that you will understand well. I can write the second term as epsilon by 2 times measure of E. Since we are taking the set over I mean integral over a set M, uh, E minus A. So I have to multiply it with measure of E minus A as per the properties. Right? Since we are not writing the integral inside, so you have to apply measure for the element here. Fine. Similarly, now look at this one. See here what I have uh, magnitude of Fn minus F. Right? Now I can write this as I'll just split this as Fn plus magnitude of F which is less than or equal to, since I am splitting the magnitude, I can write like this. Now, Fn is bounded. So, I have assumed that magnitude of Fn is less than or equal to M, right? So, this will be less than or equal to M. Plus, uh, if Fn is less than or equal to M, N is one of the certain value. Let me take this as 0. You will get F0. So, in general, it is for F, it is also less than or equal to M. So, this value will be less than or equal to 2M, I can write. That is, whenever you have magnitude of Fn minus F over a set A, we can write this as 2M. So, let me write this term is less than 2M. Since I am removing this integral, so I can write this as measure of A. As we done it for the second integral, I have done the same for first integral as well. Now, what I have assumed is measure of A is less than delta, right? So, here I can replace this as, which is less than 2 times capital M of delta plus epsilon by 2 times measure of E into measure of E minus A will be equal to measure of E. Why? Because A is the subset of E. A is subset of E. So, I can write E minus A as E as per the properties of set theory. Fine. Now, let me simplify this. I will just write here. So, I can write this as 
let me write LHS integral over E Fn minus F will be equal to so just simplify this uh, you will get 2 times M I will just uh, keep less than as it is 2 times M now let me replace the delta value Del delta value is epsilon by 4m right so i'll just replace delta by epsilon by 4m so epsilon divided by 4m plus epsilon as it is and now measure of e measure of e get cancelled you will get 2 here clear now uh, let me simplify one more step so mm get cancelled 2 ones are 2 2 are so you will get here epsilon by 2 plus epsilon by 2 so when you add you will get 2 epsilon by 2 so it is less than epsilon in the sense integral over e fn minus f will be less than epsilon for all the values greater than or equal to n right so i have proved this that is meaning of this is uh, when do we say a sequence is converging coming to the general definition whenever I have like a fn minus f less than epsilon with a, without having an integral sign so suppose if you have like this I can write this as f is equal to limit n tending to infinity fn this is what the definition of a convergent sequence right so similarly in this case I can write this as integral over e f will be is equal to limit n tending to infinity integral over e fn meaning is that whenever you have this statement you can directly write this suppose you, if you have this statement you can directly write this so this is what the bounded convergence theorem says see you integral over e f is equal to limit n tending to infinity integral over e fn and the theorem is very simple um, it is not so lengthy but the concept you have to understand fine hope so it is clear and uh, remember you have to practice along with the statement so this theorem is asked in the year 2016 and 18 so the next concept is uh, we say Lebesgue integral of non-negative measurable function Lebesgue integral of sometimes we, you, we will use uh, Lebesgue or as we can use SQE one and the same fine Lebesgue integrals of non-negative measurable function fine so you have to remember this definition in order to prove the next theorem fine uh, meaning is suppose if f is non-negative measurable function in the sense it is positive f is non-negative measurable function which is defined f is almost defined on a domain e so if f is defined on a measurable set e and f is a non-negative measurable function then Lebesgue integral over e f is defined as supremum of h less than or equal to f integral over h where h varies over all the bounded measurable function and which is vanishing outside the set of finite measure in the sense if you are going to take measure of uh, all the elements of measure over all the elements of a set E suppose if X belongs to E then if you are going to take measure over all these elements then H of X value will not be is equal to 0 and moreover this set will be equal to finite finite fine I will just repeat once again whenever we have Lebesgue integral of non-negative measurable function is defined as suppose if S, f is non-negative measurable function and which is defined on a domain E and for, a, for any element x belongs to E we can define Lebesgue integral over E of f is equal to supremum of h less than or equal to f of integral h where measure where h is none other than it is uh, h where is it is a function which varies over a bounded measurable function meaning is that whenever uh, you are going to take measure of all the elements which is in a set e then if you apply the function h over these elements it will not be equal to zero moreover uh, the measure of the particular set will be equal to finite you just need to remember this concept whenever we have Lebesgue integral of e I mean Lebesgue integral of function f defined over a set e we can be written as supremum of of h less than or equal to f integral of h where h where is uh, with respect to a bounded measurable function so you have to remember this definition hope so whatever i have done uh, it is uh, clear for you in the next session let me continue one more important theorem where we are using this property so you have to remember this definition since i'm since i have completed maximum syllabus so let me move slowly uh, hope so this theorem is uh, enough for this session please practice this uh, theorem as it is very important uh, thank you continue in the next session